So let's go next to exponential functions. So to introduce this, uh, basically, to motivate this, let's look at a finance example. So a finance example, we, you are putting, say, 100 euro in a bank account. And supposing the, the annual interest rate is, well, uh, 3%, which would be a very nice uh, find if you could find that today. And then, of course, a natural question is, you're saving for some expense, you want to buy a new computer, for instance. How much money will you have after 10 years? How much money will you have after 15 years? Or how much money will you have after T years in general? Well, how much money will you have after one year? Well, after one year, you get the 3%, right? So how much will you have? Well, you put in 100 euros, you get the interest, which is... 0.03, 3% times 100, of course that's 3. So that adds up to 100 times 1 plus 0 0.03, so 100 times 1.03 euros. That's easy, right? So what happens after 2 years? Well, after 2 years you start out with your 100 times 1.03 that we ended up with after year 1. In the next year, you gain, of course, you get your interest, but now you get your interest on the entire 100 times 1.03 that you started out with at year 1, uh, which means you get interest on ent interest, basically. So if you work that out, what's the amount of money that you will have at the end of year 2? It's ac actually 100 times 1.03 squared. Obviously, we can sort of repeat this, and after two years, in general, we end up with your initial amount, 100 euros, times 1.03, this growth rate, to the power t. So in other words, each year, your amount of money grows by a factor. It's multiplied by 1.03. So this is exponential growth. Um, so money is uh, one example of this, of course. Uh, in the recent period, we have seen other examples of exponential growth. Perhaps you can imagine uh, one other example. Of course, the growth models of diseases, of infectious diseases, they also involve exponential growth, right? Each person might, in each uh, couple of days, uh, infect two other persons. Then your R factor might, well, we all know now what the R factor is, you read about it in the news. Your R factor might be, say, 2 or whatever. Uh, so you're, yeah, again, see this exponential growth. What, you know, what does exponential growth mean? It means, of course, by definition, that the uh, amount that we have is growing with a constant factor. But that if you then look at what that implies, is here we have this uh, 0.03 uh, interest rate example that we just covered. Well, if we start with 100 euros at time zero, after 10 years, we will have an amount of 134 euros. So the increase has been 34 euros. After 20 years, we would end up with 181. So an additional increase of 46. And you see that as you go on and on, the amount, but also the increases keep growing and growing, get bigger and bigger. So it grows faster and faster. So that's typically what you also, uh, in common speech, mean by exponential growth. To stick with this uh, finance example, so we had this uh, interest rate uh, equal to R. So in our previous example, the interest rate was 3%, R equals 0.03. So then we saw that the value of 1 euro after t years was actually 1 plus r to the power t. So t appears here in the exponent of this, uh, of this expression. You might also, and we do this actually in finance a lot, ask the converse question. So if I promise you that you will get 1 euro, but not now, but next year, how much is that promise worth to you now? Well, the answer to that is actually, that's the discounted, we call this the discounted value, or in other words, the present value of some future cash flow. So the future cash flow would be one euro and one year in the future. What's that worth today? Well, that's the present value. So how do we compute the present value? Well, you basically, if you, if you do your finance classes, you'll figure out what you need to do is you have to ask yourself, how much would I need to put, put in the bank today? 
to get this future cash flow, that promised cash flow in the future. Well, if you look at this particular example, the present value of n euros to get n euros t years from now, how much would we need to put in the bank today? Well, it's n euros, but divide it now by this 1 plus r to the power t. And you remember this notation, of course, 1, plus 1 divided by 1 plus r to the power t, different way of writing this was this 1 plus r to the power minus t that you see here. So the minus t refer, refers to the fact that this thing uh, appears in the denominator rather than in the numerator, right? So in this 1 plus r to the power minus t, we call this in finance the discount factor. The discount factor, again, is an example of an exponential function in the sense that it depends exponentially on time. Time appears in the exponent with a negative number in this case, but yet it's the exponent. So in generality, so staying... Uh, uh, generalizing from this finance example, uh, what's then an exponential function? So in the functions that we looked at before, we had an x that appeared at base. We looked at this linear functions, x to the power 1, basically. Or we looked at quadratic function, x to the power 2, x squared. We looked at general power function, right? x to the power r was the uh, previous example. So r minus 3 or 4 or half. For an exponential function, x Actually, it's the exponent uh, that's varying. So the x, the variable, appears in the exponent rather than in the base. So the general form of an exponential function might be f of x, the function x, the exponential function of x, will be some capital A, a positive constant, times a little a, also a positive constant, to the power x. So something to the power x, we call that an exponential function. So how should we interpret it? this, these parameters? Well, this little a is actually the factor by which the value of this function is going to change when we move a little bit to the right-hand side. So when x increases by 1, it gets bigger. We move to the right-hand side, 1 unit. Then for an exponential function with base little a, as we move to the right by 1 unit, so as x increases by 1 unit, you see if we work this out, the function value itself get mul gets multiplied by this little a. So for each unit of movement to the right, the function get, gets increased by a factor little, little a. And uh, viewing this differently or phrasing this differently, if you want to talk in terms of percentages like we did in, uh, in this finance example, in this savings example, if p is the positive percentage, percentage, then the little a would be 1 plus p divided by 100. So when we have this 3% interest rate, the growth rate, so the little a would be 1 plus p divided by 100, or 1.03, if you work that out. So as x increases by 1, then the function value, which is the amount of money in that example that you had in the bank, increases by p percent, or it's multiplied by 1.03 in that example. And if p is negative, then we would have an a equals 1 minus p over 100. So a would be a bit smaller than 1. Then, of course, your function value is going to decrease by, that, by those p percent. That's if you have a negative interest rate or if you're discounting, for instance. So what do these exponential functions look like if you want to draw their graphs, so here they are. So on the left hand side we have the example with a, the little a, being a number bigger than one, then we have exponential growth, and you see indeed this functional function graph uh, growing and growing faster and faster as t in this case, which is the variable, so the x in the previous slide, uh, is increasing, the function is going up and up at a faster and faster rate. And similarly on the right hand side, as a is a number lower than 1, or between 0 and 1, then we would have exponential decline. So for instance, radioactivity is actually an example of exponential decline. You get 
less and less of the material, it so gets halved in each number of units, for instance, it doesn't get to entirely to zero, but it gets closer and closer to zero on the right hand side. So that happens when A is a number smaller than one, between zero and one. The big A basically measures how high this function lies. So it multiplies this entire function and well, essentially the big A uh, equals the value at which this function crosses the y-axis. So at x equals zero, in this case as t equals to zero, the big A would be the intercept of this y-axis, both here and on the right-hand side as well. So those are exponential functions. Uh, we have a closer look at those and their, uh, at their um, uh, characteristics uh, a little bit later when we look into differentiation. Um, before we do this, there's one thing that I need to tell you, which is, so we had a, you know, any a, any little a, right? So an a bigger than one, which was exponential growth, and a little a, which is lower than one, which was exponential decline. A special value for <clears throat> this little a would be the number e. And I'm sure that if you have a calculator, you'll see this number e actually appearing on it. And this e has a particular value. It's 2.71828188459045 and lots of other, other uh, numbers appearing after this. So why this number? What's so natural about it? It's a natural exponential function. It doesn't look so natural to me at first sight. But what's going to be uh, interesting about this natural exponential function is that the rate of growth will be exactly equal to the height of this function. So there's a relation between how fast, how big the function is, or how large the function is, and how fast it grows. Uh, so this is called a natural exponential function, and essentially, most of the time when we look at mathematics and also in other branches that use mathematics like economics, we will not just use any A, but we prefer to write things with this little, with this little E or, uh, as the base of this function because that it turns out to make a computations that will do a lot easier. And we'll see that when we'll do differentiation again. So E to the X is our favorite uh, exponential function, the natural exponential function. And you can use your uh, computer or your calculator to actually compute e to the power x directly. So sometimes, so we write it most of the time like e to the power x, an, uh, um, an equivalent way, synonymous way of writing this is x of x. So that just means e to the power x. It might be on your calculator, it says x of x. So an important observation that we need to make is that e to the x for any x, either be it negative this side or positive this side, e to the x always a positive number, it will never be a negative number. So the range of this function e to the power x is actually only the positive numbers. The domain, if you remember, can be anything. So we can plug in any x, positive x, and negative x, x equals zero, it's all fine, but the range, so what y numbers can we get when we put in some of these x values is always positive. So the range of the exponential function is just the positive numbers. So to end up this exponential function part, let's ask one question that we sometimes would like to answer. Suppose we have the savings account, we are still waiting to get uh, uh, for instance, 10,000 euros because we want to buy a new car. Suppose we are investing today 1,000 euros and we have a nice account which gives us an annual interest rate of 8%. And then the natural question is, how long should we wait? Should we keep our money in the savings account growing and growing at 8% a year until we have reached our 10,000 euros? Well, that's a question that we would like we will be interested in. So let's write this as a function, as an equation, actually. So the amount of money that we would have after t years, how much would that be? Well, we started out with a thousand. Each of these years, it's growing with this factor 1.08, so with the eight percent interest rate. So after t years, it would have grown to 1,000, our starting number, 
times 1.08 to the power t. So the function g of t measures how much money we have in the bank account after t years. Now we are interested in having, you know, at what moment, let's call that t bar years, will we reach this magical 10,000 euros that we need to buy this car? Well, so what we need to answer. So for what value of t bar, what amount of years, will this function, the amount of money that we have in the bank, g, will that equal the desired 10,000 euros? So what do we need to solve for that? Well, we need to obtain this t bar. So we need to solve 10,000, the amount of money that we need to have, equals, well, this g function here that we have, 1,000 times 1 1.08 to the power t bar. Well, we can simplify that a little bit by dividing both sides by 1,000. Then we get 10, so 10,000 divided by 1,000, that's 10. The 1,000 here is then you know, divided out, so 10 equals 1.08 to the power t bar. For what value of t bar does this happen? That's not such an easy question. It turns out we need logarithms to answer this question. So the next thing on our list will be to have a look at the logarithmic function.